three reasons. First, in their motive. They intended to create social upheaval in response to the internal policies of an elected government, and so, in effect, represents an intervention against a democratic system. Uh, that would be the EU way of looking at it. If you, uh, those of you who are in NATO, uh, should think of it as uh, the, the equivalent of an attack on the infrastructure of a country. If it's done by missiles, you would consider an Article 5 attack. Uh, but if it's done electronically in NATO, no one knows yet what it is, <laughs> even though the effect is the same. Secondly, their agency of these attacks. The evidence is rather strong that the attacks had been, in some way or another, state-sponsored, and so constitute a possible infringement upon national sovereignty, and more alarmingly, may well illustrate an incipient stage in the development of cyber warfare. That's being collected. And in their scope, the attacks targeted a broad range of services across public and private life in Estonia, and so can rightly be described as an assault against an entire nation. In retrospect, what is perhaps most significant about the 2007 attacks are the issues that they raised and the weaknesses that they exposed. And I will talk about those issues and the weaknesses. Though I should say also that maybe what's also significant is what wasn't exposed or what didn't happen as a result of it because actually the development of threats from uh, or within cyberspace has only increased. Uh, those of you who uh, follow these things know that uh, it was merely uh, three weeks ago, uh, in a case that's hardly an Estonian issue, that uh, it turned, we found out that the U.S. electrical grid had been compromised by malware that could be used to control and or shut down from the outside the, the electrical infrastructure of the United States. And at least the, uh, the unidentified or the an anonymity requesting senior intelligence officers who briefed the journalists on this said that the, that the malware was thought to have come from Russia and China. So these issues that uh, we confronted here two years ago, probably in the first case of uh, but not, as we see, not the last case of, uh, of the use of cyber attacks um, are no longer the theoretical discussions that those of you who, like me, read the security policy literature of the 1990s when you could read in various pieces, certain journals, survival, foreign affairs, about the prospect and the possibility of the use of the internet to cause disruptions in other countries. We now know that it's not only possible, but there are those people who do it and that they continue to work on this. We also see that cyber attacks, purely from a technical point of view, are becoming far more complex. We were subjected to DDoS attacks, distributed denial of service attacks using bots, and botnets or networks of bots. Um, what we see now, uh, at least potentially, in terms of um, malware inserted into critical infrastructure from the outside can be even more disruptive, since after all, uh, you can, in the case of DDoS attacks, keep your critical infrastructure isolated, but if it's already, if the malware is inside, it's much more difficult. Moreover, the, the idea that uh, the use of malware, DDoS attacks by state and non-state actors is growing, 
not diminishing, which I think should make us even more concerned. Mr. Chairman, the Internet has come to permeate European public and political life. We rely virtually everywhere on Internet solutions. They're an essential component of everyday life. How we do business, how we communicate with each other, in countries like mine, how we govern, and as citizens, how we go about our daily affairs. Over 90% of Estonian bank transactions, probably the number is even higher today, Mr. Minister, I think, are done on the internet. We, most of us, do our taxes on the internet in this country. Now, the European Union has already taken a number of initiatives to address the issues that we face. Uh, the European Commission's strategy for a secure information society adopted in 2007 is a welcome step forward. A number of actions under the Justice and Home Affairs pillar similarly are welcome. But needless to say, and as you can imagine, much more is needed. The development of an effective response capability against cyber disruptions requires a major cooperative effort both within and across countries. It demands the broad participation of domestic actors, private and public actors, concerted action by member states internationally and regionally. I'd like to touch in my talk about three primary domains. First of all, at the domestic or member state level, the EU level, and then finally the international level, that is the EU and other state agencies. At the member state level, I see three issues. First of all, raising public awareness of cybersecurity and threats so that people take it seriously. Secondly, Public-private cooperation, because so much of our so much of our uh, informational infrastructure is private, yet it is in the public domain. And finally, consolidation of our of our public administration, because more and more governments, but again, especially the administration, the government of this country, depends so much on the use of computers. First, the basis for effective decision-making in, in, uh, at all in this area requires targeted efforts in raising public awareness. We should not limit our efforts merely to promoting the safe use of the Internet among private individuals. We must get to the decision-makers and opinion leaders on such matters, politicians, business leaders, and journalists. It is, it is vital that the issue of cybersecurity be brought into the mainstream of the national security discourse. If policymakers are not aware of the threats, then we will not see a policy. It just comes down to that. And if the people who are involved in security policy are people who are concerned more with uh, the traditional fields of, uh, of security policy, tanks and guns and so forth, um, and don't have much to do with cybersecurity, then they will not see these as a threat until it's too late. Again, that's perhaps one of the advantages of what we have went through in Estonia today, is that, or what, two years ago, is that the attacks really did, did highlight to our security policy establishment how crucial the issue of cybersecurity is.